Hi! On The Woodpecker today, I'm making one camera surveillance for my CNC and another surveillance system for my lights. When I edit or work with Aspire, I like to see what my CNC is doing. And that's why it's carving something, of course. For this, I have an IP camera, so I can see if there's any problem. This is my camera. In fact, it's way too good for what I'm using it for. To be honest, night vision is ridiculous here. But on the other side of the shop, I have this camera, which is defective. I'm going to use my CNC cam here and use this $7 camera for my CNC. But actually, not this one. One without any piggyback PCB. But I need a case for this camera. So I draw one with Aspire. Now I need to cut it. When I have a piece of plywood the size of my laser cutting support, I cut the box. As usual, cutting a box with a laser takes a long time. But eventually, it's done. I also need some kind of support to hold the camera to the CNC. This is what I've designed. It needs to be cut. Before going any further, I check if the servo fits inside the hole. It's perfect on the first try. This means that I can glue the camera box now. This box is quite small, so all the pieces are glued in place with instant glue. There are two parts to this box. They both need to be glued. But that's not all. I also need a frame to be able to perform the camera tilt. Like all the rest, it's glued with instant glue. But I still need to finish the block that holds the tilt servo. This will go here, but at an angle. So I get my protractor and find the angle to the spindle. After that, it's as simple as using this measurement setting the table saw and cutting the block. I'm going to reclaim this piece of plywood. In fact, it's the magnets that interest me here. Now I can try the camera in its box. The small PCB I've soldered on the back is not as pretty as what I'm used to, but it's working. It doesn't matter because it's hidden inside the box. What we see is this, eh, not that bad. But I need to remove all of it so I can glue the piece that screws to the servo. I don't want to redo my box, but I've modified the design so the hole is at the right size. When it's glued in place, I add more glue from the inside because I don't want this to fall apart. There's also another servo bracket to glue inside the open box. This one is easier to glue because the hole is the right size. But just like for the other one, I add more glue. The last thing to glue is the block that I cut earlier. I don't want to wait, so I use instant glue again. Now I can assemble it all. First, I screw the servo to the piece I've glued. It's quite easy. I made a hole on the other side for the screwdriver. As a tilt pivot, I use a metal ball. I just have to push the box inside and everything fits in place. Then I glue the servo with hot glue. So if I need to remove it, it will be easier. The last thing to do is to insert the servo in its hole. Now that it's all assembled, it's time to try it. 
after plugging it to the wall, I can go to my computer and with Firefox, I can see and control the camera. As you can see from my basement, I can move the camera in all directions. But this makes me realize that in all this mess, I have this circuit I made that I can monitor the status of my CNC from my computer. I want to do something similar that can work with my new switches. But I don't want this to work with my computer, so I'm going to make something from scratch. After planning a piece of maple, I designed a round box in Aspire. I don't know why, I like round boxes. I just do. Then it's possible to cut the maple. When both pieces are free, I can see if they fit together. And obviously, they don't. So I get the chisels out and carve a little. <laughs> this would have been quicker if I had made this a little bit smaller. But now that both pieces fit, it's time to check the display. This time, I'm not surprised it doesn't fit. I have less than the 16th to remove. But I have another design problem. This time it's with those solders. I had planned for them, but the pocket is too far from the edge of the hole. It's time again to get the chisels. If I hadn't made all those errors, it would have been finished by now. I thought of a lot of things, like some space for the buzzer, the programming connector, and the connectors on the other side. I managed in the end anyway, but this still needs some holes. Like one for the power cord and also all the ones for the back of the box. Now that the holes are done, I can screw both pieces together and sand the box. The finish on this box couldn't be more simple. Linseed oil. When the oil is dry, I glue the screen with hot glue. By the way, this is a circuit I've made. This is my generic design. That's why it's missing some components and you can see some wires to make the connections. Now I can put the PCB on the screen connector, screw the back in place and put the box in front of me. Now at any time, I can see the status of all my switches. But I said to myself, I can do more than that. I solder another PCB and replace the one I had on my wall. The top one is my new design. If I turn it on, mm, there's not much difference with the old one. It gives me some information about the CNC and tells me that the spindle is turning. It will also tell me that the laser is working. <laughs> You're right, all this is useless in the shop. But in front of me, in the basement, 
on top of seeing all the status of my switches, I can see that the spindle is turning when the CNC is carving something. When it's done, I can see and hear that it's over. It's the same thing if the laser is working. This is quite useful when I do repetitive cuts that take several hours to finish. Okay, this episode was not full of woodworking, but I've been wanting to make those circuits for a long time, so I took the time to do them. I will put on my website the plans and the source code I wrote if this interests you. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker!